Hello, beautiful people. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I am reviewing the Howard Low C Whistle. Now I'm going to be comparing this whistle to other Low C Whistles that I have. Um, and also to one of the other Howard Low D whistles, so you get an idea of uh, the finger spacing and everything else that goes along with a low C whistle, which is technically a bass whistle. We're getting into the bass whistle range. So um, yeah, let's get started with this. Now one thing I will say before I continue is that this whistle actually came from bigwhistle.co.uk rather than directly from the Howard website. If you've watched my channel before, you've heard me mention Big Whistle. It's a great UK-based website that holds stock of all sorts of amazing brands of whistles. Sometimes you'll find that whistles that are out of stock elsewhere are still in stock on the Big Whistle website, so do check that out. I've linked it in the description down below and up here on the little eye. So let's get into the whistle. Now Howard whistles always come in this hard plastic case for protection. It's great for storage. They also usually come wrapped in a black tissue on the inside, but obviously I have opened this whistle. Um, it actually came to me quite a while ago, but I've not done the video on it yet. And as I said, I haven't really played it. I think I had a go when it first arrived and I've not touched it since. So as I said, nice solid plastic case for storage. You'll also notice that the case has the Howard logo on the front here, and all the Howard whistles come with that case. Now this low whistle is in the Howard black silk style, which means we have a black finish with a beautiful gold colored ring around the uh, finger holes here. And as we go to the top of the whistle, you'll see the gorgeous logo at the front. And the mouthpiece on this one is actually a balanced classic mouthpiece. If you're unfamiliar with Howard whistles, they do have a selection of different mouthpieces available, which change the tone a little bit of the whistle. Um, it's really interesting. So I'll link the video I have on that in the description down below so you can learn more about it. Now, as this is a newer Howard whistle, the newer whistles have uh, incremental tuning notches here at the top on the tuning slide. They are tunable, as I've just mentioned. You can see that they're brass on the inside and they're obviously coated with this lovely finish. And we do have a little bit of tape here, that's just to ensure that the seal is nice and tight and there's no air escaping. It also gives you a nice smooth action when you're adjusting these uh, incremental tuning adjustments. If we move to the bottom of the whistle, you can see up the bore, these are straight bore whistles. It's quite a wide bore. Um, and at the back here, we also have the key of the whistle and some details. Now the first thing everybody wants to know about a low whistle is how it sounds. So I'll attempt to play this for you. As I said, this is a cold whistle. I've not played it really before at all. It's a wide finger stretch, so we'll see how we get on. So as you can hear, this whistle has that gorgeous, rich, beautiful, quite signature sound from a Howard whistle. Um, a little bit difficult to cover the holes, but in all honesty, a lot easier than some of the other low C whistles I've played, so I'm quite impressed with um, the hole spacing on this. The one thing I will say is obviously the fifth hole is quite a large hole, so if you have slender fingers, you might have trouble covering this one. But generally, if you can play a low D whistle, you can definitely play a low C whistle as well, especially from Howard. Now let's do a quick tuning test to see where we are. Again, remember that this whistle is still cold. Uh, it's also tunable as well, so you can adjust this a little bit to suit your surroundings, the temperature, who you're playing with, etc. <laughs>
So as you can see, it takes a little bit of playing around to get those notes, but they are there and it's tuning sounds absolutely gorgeous. Um, I really love the rich sound of these whistles. They do have a little bit of a unique voice to them. You can always hear or pick out a Howard whistle and I really, really like that. Um, my preference on the mouthpieces, I actually like the reed mouthpiece. It gives it something a little extra, but as I said, do check out that other video I have where I play the different mouthpieces on the different whistles. It'll give you an idea of how the different mouthpieces change the tone and voice slightly of the whistle itself. Now, one thing that's safe to say about Howard whistles is they are very responsive. So you don't need a lot of air to hit those high notes. The uh, most complicated thing on this whistle, or the most difficult thing to achieve, is of course covering the holes. So I'll give you a quick example of how even the slightest movement off a hole can affect the note that you're trying to play. So as you can hear, if I'm not quite covering that hole, if there's the tiniest amount of air seeping from one of those holes, I can't hit the note below it. So uh, really with a low whistle or any whistle in general, it's making sure that you've got that consistent and complete hole coverage so that you can get the most a uh, prominent and clear sound from your whistle. Now let's move on to some comparisons of finger hole sizes. So I'll start with the Howard Low D and the Howard Low C. So I've chosen one of the lighter colored Low D whistles so that you get a better idea of where the finger spacing is. So the top whistle here is a Howard Low D and the bottom whistle here is a Howard Low C. If I come back a little bit, you can actually see the positioning of all the holes. Now, if I line up the top holes, you'll see that they're of a similar size. The bottom one is perhaps slightly larger. The second hole on the low D is obviously considerably closer than on the low C. And the third hole on uh, the low C is probably where you'll get your main problems, I would say. But you can see there's not too much in it. It's kind of like a, a centimeters difference. As we move down the whistle, you'll see that you'll need to keep your hands further apart on the low C as the fourth finger hole is a lot further down. The spacing between the fourth and fifth holes isn't overly large, and the fifth and sixth holes is really no different. Um, there's a few millimeters in it, but not a lot. So in general, if I line those up, the finger spacing isn't that different from uh, hand to hand, but there's mostly a larger gap in between. So you'll need to keep your hands a little further apart to play the low C whistle. In comparison to other whistles, you'll see the Howard Low C whistle on the top versus the James Dominic Music Low C whistle on the bottom. Now you'll see that the James Dominic has a larger finger spacing on the top hand, although the finger spacing on the bottom hand is practically an exact match. So it's often that top hand which people don't realize uh, that's where problems arise when you're playing a very low whistle. Most people think it's the bottom hand that they're struggling with, but actually if you're not covering this third hole properly with your finger, that's where you get problems playing the lower notes on the lower whistles. You might be better going with a James Dominic music whistle if that's more within your budget, but if you have a little extra to spend and you definitely have smaller hands, you might be better off going with a Howard. Low C. Now my final comparison is perhaps somewhat a little unfair because this is the Carboni Low C whistle at the bottom and the Howard Low C whistle at the top. And the Carboni whistles have a unique chimney extender feature inside the whistle, which means that the holes on the outside of the whistle are a lot closer together. Now these whistles are a lot more expensive than a lot of low whistles, um, so you will pay a premium price for this unique function. But as you can see, the whistle holes on the Carboni whistle at the bottom are considerably closer together. They're actually closer together than most low D whistles I have, even though this is a low C. You can see the difference on the bottom hand here as well is ridiculous really in comparison, but that is because inside this whistle, this hole uh, is, is being extended. So the hole is actually in the same place, but uh, there's a little chimney or a little tube on the inside extending down inside the whistle. So the holes on the outside are closer together. The holes on the inside are actually still in alignment pretty much with the Howard whistle. So again, if you do have a lot of money to spend or you're ready to make an investment, perhaps a Carboni whistle might be for you. But again, you can see that the difference on the top hand 
perhaps isn't that bad. So if you are able to play a regular low D whistle, you should be able to play this Howard low C as well. Now, some other things to note about this whistle. It's a reasonably lightweight whistle for a low whistle, which I really like. The mouthpieces are shaped so that they're quite comfortable in the mouth, and it enables you a lot of control of the notes, which I like. They're not metal, which also means that this whistle won't clog as easily. I often find whistles with a metal mouthpiece clog a lot easier than whistles with plastic, Dalrin, resin mouthpieces, whatever you may have up here. So um, I quite like that about these. Again, you have that interchangeable mouthpiece option, which is fantastic. Um, the whistle isn't overly slippery. I know some whistles or some people struggle to sort of keep hold of their whistles, but this isn't a particularly slippery whistle. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it, but um, I've definitely held slipperier. I've definitely held whistles that are more slippery than this, so that's something to note. The bore size is a little on the large side, but it's pretty standard as far as lower whistles go. It's not overly large for a low C whistle, but again, this isn't a whistle for small hands. It's a whistle for somebody who doesn't struggle playing a low D whistle, who has a full and good understanding and is happy with the Piper's grip because you'll need it on both hands for this whistle and just wants to try that whistle that's a step lower. Um, again, this is really useful if you're playing with piano, if you're playing with other instruments to have this key of whistle in a low whistle is something really special. Now, there is one thing I will say about low C whistles that I personally find quite difficult, and that is ornaments. And as I'm using the double-handed Piper's Grip, um, or the full Piper's Grip, as I like to call it, I usually use a half Piper's Grip, so I use my finger pads on the top and the Piper's Grip on the bottom. But with this whistle, you definitely really need that full top and bottom double-handed Piper's Grip. And if you're not used to playing with that, as I, I'm not, um, adding ornaments with this hand position can be difficult, especially if, like me, your left hand, well, it doesn't want to do anything. It's pretty much useless. This thing, it doesn't like to move. <laughs> but yeah, if, if one of your hands is a little slower or your fingers are a little bit slower, maybe you have arthritis or some sort of condition that limits the movement in your fingers, using a double Piper's Grip or the full Piper's Grip with both hands can make ornaments a little difficult, especially with the size of finger holes on a low C whistle. Um, obviously, any sort of little movement that you make will, will affect the tone that comes out of the whistle, the notes that you play. And if you haven't got those finger holes covered, um, it's more difficult to start with to slide, to tap, to cut, to roll, because there's a precision element to it. So you really need to get used to this whistle and covering the holes on this whistle with that full Piper's grip before you can move on to successfully executing your ornaments cleanly and neatly on this whistle. So just bear that in mind. So that is it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. As I mentioned, I will pop up some links on screen in a few moments. If you'd like to support my channel, don't forget you can on Coffee and Patreon. Please also, if you haven't subscribed, do hit that subscribe button, the little bell as well, so you get notifications every time new tutorials come out right here on my channel. And if you would like to support me one-off rather than monthly, um, there's also a super thanks button below this video, which you can use to show me your support as a one-off right here on YouTube. Don't forget, of course, as well, to check out the Big Whistle website to find this whistle and many more amazing brands of whistles right here in the UK. Happy whistling, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.